Within Aspen Hysis, you can use activated EDR to model a rigorous fired heater. Today, we will set up a fired heater model to replace a simple heating utility. We will import a previously prepared Aspen fired heater model and link it up, and we'll explore some of the detailed modeling results. In Hysis, open the file CDUAFH example 1. This is our starting case file. The case file provided is a detailed model of a crude distillation unit with an assay feeder capable of providing some crude blends, a rigorous model of the crude preheat train with shell and tube models for the exchangers, and as supplied, the furnace or heater is represented as a simple heating utility with an energy input. Go to File, Options, Simulation, and make sure the Allow Multiple Stream Connections box is checked. Let's double click on the rigorous model of the crude preheat train then go to the Parameters tab and check the Ignore box so that we don't solve this preheat train until we are ready to. Not doing this will cause Hysis to constantly solve when we make changes to our fired heater. Now let's add the fired heater unit operation to our flow sheet. Go to the Flow Sheet Modify tab, then Models and Streams to access the palette. Select the fired heater and drop it on. Let's double click the unit operation to open it. Select warm crude as the inlet stream. The zone is radiant. Select hot crude as the outlet stream. We also need to supply both fuel and air to the heater. We're going to define the fuel. We're going to supply air and we'll call the combustion product flue gas. Let's go to worksheet composition and define the composition of air. Let's make it 78% nitrogen and 22% oxygen. Let's define our fuel as 100% methane. Now let's go to conditions to define the conditions of air and fuel. Air will be supplied at 25 degrees C and 1 bar, and fuel will be supplied at the same temperature and 2 bar. We have defined air and fuel as fully as required. Let's close this window and look at the activated EDR exchanger feasibility tile in Hysis. Click the tile to open the exchanger summary table, which lists each model, their status, Summary and any warnings. Click the green button and choose to show the legend and model statuses on the flow sheet. We can see from the dark green circle around our fired heater that it's a simple model. Hovering over this ring displays a window with information about the simple fired heater and an option to convert to rigorous, which can also be found on the exchanger summary table. Clicking this button opens a window with instructions on how to convert to a rigorous fired heater model. Select Convert to open your fired heater. Select EDR Fired Heater to tell Hysis that we will use Aspen Fired Heater to model this furnace. Next, click the EDR Fired Heater tab, then the Import button to import an EDR Fired Heater model. Let's find and select our file, Aspen Fired Heater Twin Cabin 1. You will find that the flow sheet converges very quickly. In this tab, you can see that the heater duty is 65.73 megawatts. The efficiency is 86.66, and we need 5,457 kilograms per hour of fuel to achieve our required outlet conditions for the crude. You can see the split in duty between the firebox and the convection bank, and we can see the peak tube temperature calculated for the firebox and in the convection sections. Now let's look at the Aspen fired heater model to understand its geometry and other details. Click the Model Details button. This opens Aspen EDR within Aspen Hysis. Note that instead of importing a previously prepared fired heater, we could have disconnected the model and designed one from scratch. Go to Input, Heater Geometry, Firebox, and you can see the furnace construction has twin boxes. These are 8 meters high, 20 meters long, and 4 meters wide. Go to the Firebox Diagram tab, to see the arrangement of the tubes in the firebox. We have three paths in each of the two fireboxes, and each of these paths is 28 vertical tubes connected by hairpins. You might want to explore some of the other tabs here. Now let's look at the convection banks, starting with the connections diagram. This shows us how the process stream, the warm crude, flows through the heater. It enters the second convection bank, flows through the first convection bank, then goes through the tubes of the firebox. If we go to the Layout tab, we can see how the program has defined the flow of the process stream through the heater. Bank 2 is the default inlet, and the process stream flows from Bank 2 into Bank 1. 
The process stream then flows from bank 1 into the firebox. If we go to the Bundle Details tab, we can see how the tubes are arranged in the convection bank. Bank 2 consists of 6 rows, and Bank 1 consists of 3 rows of tubes. You may like to look at some of the other tabs, where the precise geometry of the tubes themselves are defined. Fired Heater has a thorough list of geometry options that you can fine-tune to run more accurate, rigorous simulations. Under Results Summary, Overall Summary, you can review your results. This is similar to the summary we saw in Hysis, where we have details of what's occurring inside different regions of the heater itself, as well as the overall condition. Here, under Calculation Details, Stream Details, we can see step-by-step -step details through the tubes of the convection section, the tubes of both convection banks, and through the firebox. We get detailed local information on what's occurring on a tube-to-tube -tube basis, and this includes two-phase flow pattern information which could be useful in avoiding undesirable flow conditions in the firebox. There are also some plots available, for example, stream temperature, tube mean temperature, and so on. Let's switch back to Hysis and delete the simple heating utility and the energy stream. Now let's go back to the rigorous preheat train model and stop ignoring it. The flow sheet converges quickly. Now let's open the fired heater model again and go to the worksheet tab. You may observe that the pressure of the warm crude, the inlet to the furnace, has been specified as well as the pressure of the outlet, the hot crude. Let's make better use of fired heater hydraulics. If we remove this specification, we will be using fired heater to calculate what inlet pressure is required in order to satisfy the requirements of the outlet condition of the heater. You should see that HISIS converges quite quickly. If the crude is supplied at this pressure, 13.38 bar, it will be sufficient to overcome the flow resistance of the fired heater tubes.